Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're taking another look at the 7900 GRE. And this is a re-re-review of the re-review of the review. And I'm taking a third crack at reviewing the GRE because there was a small amount of controversy regarding our results, which was a result of us opting to do what we always do, and that is test GPUs at their base spec using reference or founders edition models when possible. And when not possible, we manually clock them to the base spec or load a base spec BIOS. The problem with this approach, at least in this instance, is that the AMD reference version of the GRE, it runs at a lower power target than many of the board partner models, or perhaps all of them. It also runs much hotter and therefore could be prone to throttling. We have seen this from AMD reference cards in the past. But given that we always use base model data for our GPU testing, and we did so when testing the 7800 XT, for example, it didn't seem right to compare something like the Sapphire Nitro Plus with the AMD reference 7800 XT. And admittedly, I really didn't think it'd be that much of an issue anyway, because normally board partner models are just a few percent faster. But when comparing the AMD reference 7800 XT with the reference 7900 GRE, we found that the GRE was just 6% faster on average for rasterization performance and 10% faster when focusing on ray tracing. Now, if we compare those numbers with a trusted media outlet such as Tech Power Up, who do excellent testing, we see that they found the Sapphire Nitro Plus version of the GRE to be 13% faster than AMD's reference version of the 7800 XT at 1440p, and then 12% at 4K, so around twice the margin I found. That said, they also found the Sapphire Nitro Plus version of the 7800 XT was 4-5% faster on average, which would push the margins more in line with what I reported. So, I've gone back and added the Sapphire Nitro Plus versions of the 7800 XT and 7900 GRE to my data. Something I wish I had done originally, but didn't realise at the time that this would be a potential issue. This will allow us to not only compare overclocked versions of both models, but also cross-reference that data with the AMD reference models. And there's some really interesting data in here that highlights just how unusual the GRE can be. So let's get into it. Starting with Resident Evil 4 at 1440p, the Nitro Plus GRE is 7% faster than the AMD model, so that's a big gain there. Meanwhile, the Nitro Plus version of the 7800 XT is just 3% faster than the AMD Reference 7800 XT. So when comparing AMD Reference models, the GRE was 8% faster, but if we compare the Nitro Plus models, the GRE is 11% faster. And worse still, if we compare the Nitro Plus GRE to the base spec 7800 XT, it's 15% faster, and that's the comparison that we were originally trying to avoid. And it's a similar story at 4K, the Nitro Plus 7800 XT is just 3% faster than the reference model, while the Nitro Plus GRE is 5% faster. So whereas the AMD reference models saw the GRE win by a 9% margin, using the Nitro Plus sees it win by a 12% margin. And again, if we compare the stock 7800 XT to the Nitro Plus GRE, the Sapphire card is 15% faster. Now this is odd though, retesting it with a Plague Tale Requiem sees no performance change for either of the Nitro Plus models, performance is the same as the AMD reference cards at 1440p, and even at 4K we find the same thing, the overclocked Nitro Plus models deliver the same level of performance. That said though, this isn't necessarily unheard of. We have seen this in the past from factory OC models. They don't always deliver more performance. And it's a similar story in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. The Nitro Plus models deliver similar performance to that of the AMD reference models, and this was seen at both 1440p and 4K. Dying Light 2 though does see some performance uplift with the Nitro Plus models at 1440p. In the case of the 7800 XT, we're looking at a rather large 6% boost with just a 2% boost for the GRE, which is a bit surprising. Now, increasing the resolution to 4K does eliminate the gains from overclocking the 7800 XT, and now the Nitro Plus models are just 2% faster. So like what we saw with Cyberpunk and A Plague Tale Requiem, there's really not much in it. Next up, we have Spider-Man Remastered, and here the results do favour the Nitro Plus GRE, which is 8% faster than the AMD reference version at 1440p, whereas the Nitro Plus version of the 7800 XT is just 1% faster than the reference version. 
That means if we compare the AMD reference spec versions of the 7800 XT and GRE, the GRE is just 5% faster. But if we compare the Nitro Plus models, the GRE is 12% faster. And if we compare the base spec 7800 XT to the Nitro Plus GRE, the margin grows to 14%. And it's a similar story at 4K, here when comparing the reference models, the GRE is 8% faster, but when comparing the Nitro Plus models, it's 11% faster. Moving on to Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p, we see that when comparing the AMD reference models, the GRE is 9% faster, whereas that margin grew quite substantially with the Nitro Plus models to 17%, and that's a 23% uplift if we compare to the base spec 7800 XT. Then at 4K, as we saw previously, a 13% increase for the GRE when comparing AMD's reference models, and with the Nitro Plus models, that margin increased to 17%. So if you were to compare the Nitro Plus GRE to a base model 7800 XT, you'd find it to be 22% faster in this example. The Last of Us Part 1 results are surprising in that they're similar to what we've seen in a few other titles such as Cyberpunk, so that is to say little to no difference between the GRE and 7800 XT, regardless of the model used. We know this to be a very memory sensitive title, so it would seem as though the more memory limited bandwidth of the GRE is a problem here. And it's much the same at 4K, that said we do go from a 2% margin in favour of the GRE when using the reference models to 4% with the Nitro Plus. Now, next up we have Starfield, and here the margins do increase when comparing the Nitro Plus models. Previously we found just a 2% margin when using the AMD reference versions, but with the Nitro Plus cards that margin grows to 8%. Still not significant, but much bigger than what we previously saw. Then at 4K we go from no performance difference between the 7800 XT and GRE with the reference models to 10% when comparing the Nitro Plus cards. Testing with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 shows no real change between the Nitro Plus and the reference models. We're still seeing a 15% uplift for the GRE at 1440p, which is quite a substantial improvement, at least based on some of the gains we've seen in some of the other games tested. And that margin is then extended to 21% at 4K, so this title seems to scale really well for the GRE. Now, with Alan Wake 2, we previously found when testing the base spec models that the GRE was just 3% faster than the 7800 XT at 1440p, but that margin grew to 8% when using the Nitro Plus cards. And it's a similar story at 4K. Previously, the GRE was just 3% faster, but when using the Nitro Plus, it's now 6% faster. And if we compare the Nitro Plus GRE to the stock 7800 XT, we see a 9% increase. The GRE also looks more impressive in Watch Dogs Legion when testing with the Nitro Plus. Previously, the GRE was found to be just 4% faster at 1440p, but when comparing the Nitro Plus models, that margin blows out to 10%. Then at 4K, we find no difference in performance between the 7800 XT and GRE, but with the Nitro Plus cards, the GRE is now 6% faster. Finally, we have Hitman 3, and here the margins don't really change at 1440p. The GRE was just 3% faster when comparing the reference models, and that margin is actually reduced to just 2% with the Nitro Plus cards. That said, if you were to compare the stock 7800 XT to the Nitro Plus GRE, the GRE would end up being 6% faster. The 4K results though, they're quite different. When comparing the AMD reference models, the GRE was 10% faster, so quite a large margin, and it's only slightly extended when comparing the Nitro Plus models to 13%. But again, if we compare the stock 7800 XT to the Nitro Plus GRE, we do find a 17% margin in favour of the GRE. Okay, so here's the 12 game average focusing on the 1440p data. Previously, we found the 7900 GRE to be just 6% faster than the 7800 XT, and if we compare the Nitro Plus models, that margin only increases to 8%. However, if we compare the base model 7800 XT to the Nitro Plus GRE, we find an 11% margin, which is very close to the 13% margin that Tech Power Up found in their Nitro Plus GRE review using a range of different games, so that data makes sense. Now, at the 4K resolution, we previously found the GRE to be just 5% faster than the 7800 XT, and when comparing the Nitro Plus models, that margin grows to 11% which is the same margin we see when comparing the base model 7800 XT 
to the Nitro Plus GRE. So the same margin seen at 1440p. And please keep in mind these average results are calculated using the GeoMean. Now, if we were to recalculate the cost per frame data based on the 1440p results, we find much the same. The 7800 XT is slightly better value, but overall, they're much the same in terms of value across the dozen games that we tested. Even if we compare the Nitro Plus GRE results with the base model 7800 XT, in terms of value, they're much the same. Also, just in case you're wondering, I have put question marks next to the Nitro Plus models, as they're not really $500 US MSRP models, but for the sake of this comparison, let's just pretend that they are. The GRE does shape up better at 4K when compared to the Nitro Plus, as both the 7800 XT and GRE end up offering about the same value, but really, there aren't any significant changes here. So there you have it. I'm not going to bother going over all the ray tracing data again. I think you get the idea. And that is, if you compare like for like, the margins really shouldn't be that dissimilar overall to what we've shown previously. For example, the base spec models saw a 6% advantage in favour of the GRE, whereas the overclocked Nitro Plus models saw an 8% margin. So, like for like, the 7900 GRE really isn't that much faster than the 7800 XT across a wide enough range of games. There are certainly examples where that 33% increase in cores results in around a 20% performance boost, but there are many more examples where the gains are 8% or less. Again, these results make sense with what others such as Tech Power Up have reported. They've shown, for example, that the Nitro Plus 7800 XT is 4-5% faster than the reference 7800 XT. And in fact, it matched the 6900 XT exactly in those tests. So if you were to take that as a reference point, you'd find that the 7900 GRE Nitro Plus is 8% faster than the 6900 XT, which aligns exactly with our data. So again, overall, the 7900 GRE, it's not worlds faster than the 7800 XT. I've seen people in the comments trying to tell me it's 15 or 20% faster, but that's simply not true, if you test enough games. Rather, those margins are up to, or best case scenarios. They're certainly not what you can expect to see across a wide range of games. As for how the 7900 GRE should be compared to the 7800 XT, it's difficult to say, as partner card models are still yet to go on sale, or at least they were at the time I was preparing this video. Ideally though, I will need to get my hands on a $550 MSRP model and test that. But I think it's fair to say that as long as you're not comparing a premium model such as the Nitro Plus to a base model 7800 XT and doing your value analysis based on that, then I don't really think there's an issue. At the end of the day, none of this changes our recommendations or sort of lack of enthusiasm for the GRE. Like, if you're really excited about the GRE, then you were probably really excited about the 7800 XT, which, you know, wasn't a terrible product in terms of value. But if you're really excited about the 7800 XT, then you should have been really excited about the 6800 XT, which was a good product, admittedly. You just couldn't get it during the mining boom craze. But the point is, we're many years on from the 6800 XT, which we believe was a good product, uh, and these newer RDNA 3 models, while they do improve the value, it is many years later, not that exciting. But what is a bit exciting is that AMD's told me that the extremely limited overclocking of the GRE cards is a bug, and it will be addressed shortly. Hell, it might even be fixed by the time you watch this. And if that is the case, I will be keen to do some overclocking to see just how much more you can squeeze out of cards like the Nitro Plus we're not limited to a 3% memory overclock. For now though, we are done here. If you enjoyed this sort of follow-up content where we tried to explain the differences you were seeing in reviews and the difference between a product like this and a base spec at 7800 XT, which I'm not convinced is a good way of evaluating the GRE, but again, we'll have to get some sort of base spec MSRP models of the GRE and see how they differ to this. Probably not gonna be a big difference because there's not really a big difference anyway, but it does skew the results a bit using a premium product like this against a reference 7800 XT. Anyway, like if you liked it, subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to uh, support the channel and get some cool perks in return, we have Float Plan or Patreon. Signing up to either one of those gives you access to stuff like our Discord chat. Straight away, members were asking me uh, shortly after the reviews went live about the discrepancies between various different review outlets and what was going on there. And I was able to do this testing fairly quickly and inform them as I was doing uh, the testing. So on a game, 
game by game basis, I was able to provide results and let you guys in the Discord chat know what I was finding and what I thought was going on. So yeah, interesting for those of you who want a bit more insight. We also do monthly live streams, behind the scenes content and Q&A stuff. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.